relying on goodwill for preservation of these historic buildings, sites and monuments is not sustainable. These buildings contribute to the glory of cities and towns and are great drivers of the tourism sector. As you also notice, given time, our monuments have first disappeared given the rise of iconic buildings while those still in existence are in poor state and have been overshadowed with newly constructed structures. And as a result, cities of significant history have lost out important buildings and sites, reference not forgetting unique features that distinct one city from another. Historic sites and buildings are explicitly created to commemorate a person's legacy, event, heritage or culture of a people. In my background is the monument of Sir Edward William Frederick David Walugembe Luangura Mutebi Mutesa II. He served as the first Ugandan president from 1963 to 1966. This statue is erected just a few meters from the Independence Monument. Public sensitization and enactment of ordinances are cited among proactive mechanisms in securing the future of the important sites and buildings that are under the threat umbrella. But we can't entirely rely on goodwill. It's not enough. That's the reason we must back it up with a legislation. So we're expediting the processes of enacting. The bill is already in place. Uh, the, the, the number of provisions in that bill. It was tabled before council, so it's being processed uh, in accordance with the law. It's already before council. So we want that law to be in place so that it spells out the nitty grit of what is required to preserve these structures so that everything is in black and white. It's quite challenging. Uh, I mean, uh, I saw it when we were advocating for the safeguarding of Watoro Church. People were asking many questions. Uh, this is a private property. Why do we need to preserve it? It's an Indian architecture uh, building. Why do we need to preserve it? So, yes, there is need to increase uh, public awareness. But also we are aware that, uh, uh, for example, cultural institutions like Buganda Kingdom, for example, there are a lot of buildings that they, you cannot touch. If you touch them, it's like you have touched the, the, the norm. So they, they will always fight to protect them. So, we are also moving forward with that will uh, of already uh, cultural institutions, even across the country. There are kingdoms uh, like Busoga, they have buildings that you cannot touch. So there is public will and we will develop on that. The insurance industry can also come in handy with tailor-made insurance policies geared at addressing various risks such as fire outbreaks. For the case of Makerere University's Ivory Tower fire, an insurance policy could have helped restore it. What is important is while projects are being put in place, there must be an insurance component. One, in terms of even a fire, the cheapest rate for fire is 0.125% for like an office building. If you look at 0.125%, it's a very small factor on the expenses of the project. In terms of the structures that are already running, say for example the ivory tower, yes, it is understood that there was no insurance, but I think what we've seen in papers, that actually the council was in the process of having insurance in place. It was okay coincidence, but we believe that these are some of the things that should be help should help us to emphasize the need for insurance. That how can you lose, uh, say, a structure of 22 billion, which has been there for a long time, yet you can pay some little premium, in terms of very little premium every year. Uganda's insurance penetration is upsettingly low, and this is majorly attributed to the public's ignorance and lack of commitment and support from government. However, the general manager, Clarkson Insurance Brokers, Alex Makata, argues that this is just a small aspect of risk management. So even if the Ivory Tower was insured, the risk management aspect has to continue. You must have fire hydrants, you must have smoke detectors, you must have uh, security in place. So, so basically, this becomes like a fallback position. It's about, again, awareness and knowing what is in it in terms of a premium or price. Because the price is a very small factor on the structure. So people always think that, that the value of the property, of the, of the building, of the car, you pay almost like a quarter of that. Yet you pay a very small percentage to, to, to keep you for at least a year. 
Some of the renowned historic buildings, sites and monuments in the country are Kasubi tombs, Namugongo Mata Shrine, Bank of Uganda in the heart of Kampala, the Independence Monument, Parliament Building, the Source of the Nile, Speak Monument in Jinja and Nero Rock paintings in Eastern Uganda, among others. Denis Igoa for UBC News.